tragedy and the place in the sun is Elizabeth Taylor and Montgomery Clift uh, starring movie. Um, it was also um, uh, like most movies of course, you know you, uh, you have a great novel and you have to compress it within two hours. So, um, what do you think could have been left out in the film? What parts? Loud Ashwin. Yeah, the childhood. His childhood is completely skipped over. Okay, he, we are, the director is not in, uh, interested in the childhood at all. The director is not in, interested in uh, projecting Estas plight and mother, uh, parents, missionary zeal at all. Okay, so where they are, he they, he doesn't even uh, refer to the car accident and the incident that happens back home. Okay, and the reason that forces almost um, Clyde Griffiths out of that small town and into Lycurgus. But he is the, there is no absolutely no mention whatsoever of all these very crucial incidents which are so important here. Okay, what we are, how the movie opens and uh, I think YouTube must be having the opening shot also of the film somewhere, which is very striking. The opening shot has the great Montgomery Clift uh, hitchhiking his way to New York, to the big town. Okay, so, he is at the crossroads, he is leaving his small town. We are not given the backdrop, backdrop or background. We are just told, we are just shown and it is the opening credit cr title sequence, there he is hitchhiking and he starts, he just hops into one of those um, wagons and drives towards the big town, towards the big city. Now, um, what happens when we skip all these parts? Why are these, these initial parts at all, important at all to us? Character? Okay, give me something more. Because what happens once he arrives in town? Immediately he is in his throne uh, in the company of this very uh, wealthy uh, family of his, the wealthy cousins, the wealthy uncle, and uh, the high society as uh, shown by the lives of his cousins and also the new girl he meets. Sandra Fishti in this novel, she is now. Angela as played by Elizabeth Taylor in the film. Okay, so, the, even the names are changed, but um, Roberta's character is played by uh, this uh, method actress of those times, Shelley Winters. Now, Shelley Winters uh, is one of those factory girls. Okay. Now, um, my question again, what impact do you think uh, would it leave on the movie? when the initial parts are skipped. We do not see the transition. We do not see the transition. We do not see the transition. We also skip a very crucial aspect of uh, the hero's character and what is his character? His ambition, but ambition is there and nevertheless. His upbringing. His upbringing, okay. So, his very rigid upbringing as contrasted to his burning ambitions and desire. So, we have been talking about desire and ambition, the novel being American dream, the fact that we keep on referring to American dream so frequently, okay, that is. What else is lost? In his interactions and his uh, with uh, Hortons and in his, uh, uh, his experiences as a bellboy, what is, what are the crucial details of his characters that we miss out? His passion. His passion? With Hortense. How okay. He uh, like came from a very rigid background and then he was thrown in, he had a lot of freedom all of a sudden mm -hmm. and how he um, could not cope with mm -hmm. that. And that uh, the car accident, everything changed him uh, a lot and he became a very guarded person in book two. So, I think we do not see that, like why he becomes a guardian, uh, he, he is not so sure of what kind of friendships to make. Okay, so in the movie all these things are missed and perhaps we are shown that he is already a guarded person. We never understand uh, his repressions, his insecurities, his complexes, his in feelings of inferiorities. 
all those things are not highlighted or projected at all. Okay. Also the fact, well you see this is a 51 movie, so um, although there were winds of changes in cinema also, we started having the concept of anti-hero, negative kind of hero, uh, so which was okay in novel, okay, but not so okay in films. Now, when we have a character in the novel who has been so indifferent to the plight of every buddy around him. So, his parents he does not care, if he thinks over and then he ignores, he thinks of Esther and he ignores her, okay. he thinks he, he is passionately involved with Hortense, not in love, that is never, that never comes, love will never be a part of a naturalistic novel. Okay. It is all basic instincts, okay. so his instincts towards or for Hortense, the accident. Okay, all these things are coming. So, you see hero on a very clean slate here. So, much as a, a, one of, see it is a very well made film, it is a very well crafted film, it is a very, it is a brilliantly acted film, but then it is only a portion, a slice of the novel. The highlight of the film is uh, the love triangle. Okay, the highlight of the novel is social conditions. So, social conditions are referred to in the film also, but not the way the love story is projected. After all, the director must have felt that you have Elizabeth Taylor, so why waste her? Okay, so, therefore, let us have the focus on her. So, Sandra is, a, as I have been telling you all about, she is a very flighty kind of a young girl, barely out of teenage. Now, she has been snubbed by Gilbert Griffiths, therefore, she picks this guy up, because she thinks that this is one way of getting her own back at Gilbert. And also, um, she, uh, her family uh, generally regarded as the nouveau rich kind, okay. they are looked down upon by Mrs. Griffiths, the rich, the wealthy Mrs. Griffiths. Mm, yes. So, this is one way of for Sandra to come up in uh, at least social hierarchy, they have wealth, perhaps more wealth than the Griffiths, but the prestige that they are lacking in, okay, that can be, so everyone is using someone else to come up the ladder. This angle is completely glossed over in the, in the movie. Okay. So, now I am taking you to this particular scene where the boy is already taken and he is shown his place where he should be working. So, um, uh, men's shirts, here the focus is on collars, but here in the film they are in the uh, process, uh, in the business of making men's garments. So, that is a minor change. Now, again I am interested in the title, an American tragedy, people, it, it was a very successful popular novel. Why change good things? I mean, after all, we have the English patient adapted as the English patient, right, on screen. We have all great works of literature, East of Eden, the novel and East of Eden, the film. Why change American tragedy to a place in the sun? American tragedy is a very somber title for a movie. It puts off people. Yes. Yeah. The other hand is very pleasant. It is a pleasant, yeah, it evokes certain pleasantness, it evokes certain kind of a be poetic imagery. Also, as you mentioned, the shift is romance. The focus is uh, shifted to romance rather than uh, the, the social, social aspect, social. yeah. It is it's no longer uh, an abysmal, hopeless, naturalistic social tragedy. The novel is no holds barred. Okay. At, at, uh, there are certain points where you feel for a 1925 novel, it is very revolutionary, not for from today's point of view, nothing shocks anyone anymore, but for 1920s, yes. So, the, the title of the year, it, 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 it is evocative, it is romantic, it is not so cut and dried as calling it a tragedy. Also, the movie is trying to be American tragedy, the audience will expect an unpleasant ending as well and that is not what audience That is going audience. to happen here as well. Yeah. That happens here as well, but again, well, um, let me show you. And if you focus on the the cover title, the poster of a place in the sun, 
with Montgomery Clift. Do you see? Is it clear? And Elizabeth Taylor. Okay, so this is the way of it, this that film was advertised. Okay, so focus is completely on them. So this was perhaps a great departure that who you should be focusing on. The focus of the novel is definitely not Sandra, but here even renaming her, rechristening her as Angela, that itself is quite romantic in my opinion. She becomes his angel. Coming to chapter now 2 that we have been talking about, the head of the Lycurgus branch of the Griffiths as contrasted with the father of the Kansas City family was most arresting. Now, you have to look at again the binaries throughout, okay. uh, binaries as well as the so called doppelganger and the double. Okay. So, fa this father is contrasted with that father, this mother with that mother, this sister with that sister, this boy, this young man with Clyde Griffith. So, throughout yeah, and then this girlfriend, the, the poor girlfriend with the, uh, with the Hortenses of the world. And then you have Angela or Sandra in the novel who is absolutely unattainable, therefore it, she is all the more attractive for, to him. Okay. Uh, now, um, would you like to comment on chapter 2? For me, it is page 157. I think you will have to scroll down a bit if you are looking at the e copies of it, uh, where he says, uh, Griffith senior suddenly observed, I had a curious experience in Chicago this time, something I think the rest of you will be interested in. He was thinking of an accidental encounter two days before in Chicago between himself and the eldest son as it proved to be of his younger brother Asa, also of a conclusion he had come to in regard to him. Now, this boy is mentioned as an afterthought, the family is already into something, they are already having a discussion very pleasant things of life and then suddenly he rem reminds, he remembers and mentions this boy to his family. How important could this boy be to this family, even to his own uncle who is his own blood? Nothing much, it is like a chance encounter with a stranger who is in, who is, a, who has fallen on bad days and he requires certain, some kind of help. Now, I um, will skip a page and then, a cousin, how old is he, asked Gilbert instantly. Curious as is to his character and situation and ability. Well, he is a very interesting young man, I think, continued Griffiths tentatively and somewhat dubiously, since up to this hour he had not truly made up his mind about Clyde. He is quite good looking and well mannered too, about your own age, I should say, Gil, and looks a lot like you, very much so, same eyes and mouth and chin. He is a little bit taller if anything and looks a little thinner though I do not uh, believe he really is. At the thought of a cousin who looked like him, possibly as attractive in every way as himself and bearing his own name, Gilbert chilled and bristled slightly. For here in Lycagus, up to this time, he was well and favourably known as the only son and heir, presumptive to the managerial control of his father's business and to at least a third of the estate, if not more. And now, if by any chance it should come to light that there was a relative, a cousin of his own years and one who looked and acted like him, even he bridled at the thought, forthwith a psychic reaction which he did not understand and could not very well control, he decided that he did not like him could not like him. Without meeting Gil Clyde, there is a judgment and opinion form about him. 
And what does it tell you about family relationships? It is all controlled by money and status and prestige. He is the one, he is the chosen one. Now, someone has come and he is a threat, although he is no threat at all. Okay, but just by virtue of being uh, somewhat uh, physical resemblance to him, by the virtue of sharing a common family name, this man has, this unseen, unknown boy has become a very serious major threat. And this is a, so what I, I was asking you to theorize it uh, a little bit. Naturalism thrives on Darwinian's theory, Darwinism. Can you tell me what is Darwin's theory? The most famous saying of, uh, the most famous conclusion of Darwin's theories. It is all about the survival of the fittest, right? Survival of the fittest. Are you aware of that? So, who survives? The strongest, the fit. Nature has made everyone unequal, that is the idea. So, we are not into an idealistic realm. Now, contrast it if you, if you uh, can with Henry James, full of idealistic characters, especially your heroine. So, the leading character in Henry James is always an idealistic character. They didn't know that such a cousin existed, and, but it's so different. Yes. Different how Gilbert reacts. Yeah, and she is a poor cousin too. Yeah. Yeah. So it is never at the forefront, at the uh, at any in any part of his mind that she will come and take control of one third, one half, two fourths, and what not. Okay. But here suddenly the idea of share, property, wealth, money, class, everything comes into yeah, and. This is perhaps what Dreiser tells us that this is what life. So, we have seen a realistic novel, we are seeing a naturalistic novel. And, uh, at a later point, um, we are told how both Mr. Griffiths and uh, Gilbert, they both believe that caste is necessary hmm. and it is important that these social distinctions prevail in the society. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Class is necessary. Class is necessary. So, uh, again, I, we have been talking about Dreiser and his. Marxist leanings. So, classes exist because of people like Mr. Griffiths who uh, claim to be liberal capitalists, but are they are the, these people really so what they claim to be? So, there can be never any uh, any such thing as liberal capitalism. All sorts of capitalism they exist to keep people in their places. Yeah, that is a good point that is also you are making an Althusserian point. So, keep everyone that is what Gramsci says, yeah, hegemony of the ruling class of the bourgeois. So, people have to know their places and there are certain institutes that are. So, you have all those institutions coming into play in this novel. What did, uh, what does uh, Gramsci tell you? What are those great institutions that men, men made institutions? Church, school, law, order, court, justice, family, all these things are, all these things exist to keep people in their particular class. Okay, you have aspirations, you can come up whatever way, that is different. The higher you come, the less controlled you will be. The more, the low, at the lower uh, rung of society, all these institutions that exist, that that, that uh, exists in, in the top, at the top of the hierarchy. He, they give you a triangle, the kind, you know, all these, uh, the ideological state apparatus, Althusser, okay, that is what he tells you. He gives you something at the top and at the top these things exist. Hege um, uh, uh, Gramsci's concept of hegemony also feeds on Althusserian concept of ideological uh, apparatus of the state. Okay. All those things were not there when the novel was written, but how it anticipates all those theories. And Darwinism. Now, uh, for me, uh, this is a page 160. You will have to skip a bit, skip a bit. Yeah. 
when Gilbert has already very openly displayed his uh, contempt for this unknown, un unseen cousin and uh, Bella, the sister, she is, yeah, she, she, she is interested in meeting, he, there could be an amusing company, she thinks Gilbert is too stuck up, you know, too coiled a character, not amusing enough, not fun enough, but perhaps if a cousin comes into her life, the things will be more lively and yeah, generally, you know, uh, uh, opposite sex cousins, so there, there is not that kind of rivalry as it exists between same sex cousins. So, now look at dad's opinion or dad's observation here. All I know is that his father was never very practical and I doubt if Clyde has ever had a real chance. All I know is that his father was never very practical and I doubt if Clyde has ever had a real chance. Uh, his son winced at this familiar and friendly and familiar use of his cousin's first name. My only idea in bringing him on here was to give him a start. I have not the faintest idea whether he would make good or not. He might and again he might not. If he did not, he threw up one hand as much as to say, if he does not, we will have to toss him aside of course. Okay? So, everyone this is the benevolent capitalism, liberal capitalism. Okay? So, everyone deserves a chance, we, I have brought him here, I will give him a start, I will give him a chance. If he makes it fine, if he does not, who cares. Okay? So, again this is very Darwinian. Okay, it's survival of the fittest. Now, you are calling a boy, uh, again look at the, the, the uncle is portrayed very objectively. Okay, he is uh, generally seen as a regular guy, a rich man who has come up uh, with his hard work and determination. He is very practical, therefore he could make it, his brother could not make it. He is very practical, therefore he gave all the chances to his children. The other brother is, has never been practical and therefore his children never got a start in life. Therefore, their miseries, therefore their sufferings. Now, this is all about survival of the fittest. And Dreiser has no sympathies for people who cannot survive, because that is the way, uh, that is the way life exists. Do you agree? Do we look out for those people who are unable to fend for themselves? How many of us do? Okay. And it is also, some critics have also questioned that uh, uh, under the garb of bringing this poor relation, you know, uprooting him from one city to another, is not uh, Gilbert, is not Griffith senior doing a great justice to his nephew, because his, his nephew is just not cut out to survive in a big city. He has no skills and that is proved the moment he walks in. Okay, he has always been a bellboy, but we, he gives an impression that, that he is on some managerial kind of a position in that hotel, not a simple bellboy. So, once he arrives on, on the scene here, we are, he is absolutely exposed and there is nothing he can be given. And therefore, in the uh, movie clipping that you just watched, the iron gate. Did you see the imagery of the iron gate? Iron gate that closes in his face and what does it show symbolically? On screen what are we being told? He is shut, he's shut out. You are not and there is an iron gate which exists between you and the world outside, between the world there and you. And there is this divide, there is this wall which you can never aspire to and then Suddenly, he sees Elizabeth Taylor and her rich friends whisking away in a car and this is the set he wants to join. So, car again and again and again. Okay. again all these sports cars, fancy cars, they symbolize wealth, upward social mobility for him. Throughout the uh, uh, novel, throughout the film, those symbols are thrown all over the place. Any comments? Anything you want to talk about from the movie clipping that you just watched? Do 
girls from the lower class have too many restrictions ok. It is very important for them and especially in Uncle Griffith's factory that they do not socialize with men they work with. But then what about girls that come from Angela's or Sandra's social class ok. Why are those restrictions not applied to them and if they get into trouble, first of all no one would dare to get them into trouble. This is also so, Angela is always treated um, with lots of respect, with lots of distance, uh, even when they start going around Angela is always like to be uh, this pure angelic creature who has to be uh, cherished and protected. Does he have those same feelings towards this girl? Yeah, he just accidentally bumps into her in this movie theater and what does he do? He puts his arm around her, uh, her very casually as if girls like of her class are there, are available even though they have, she has her defenses ok. He knows that these defenses would not last long because that is their class and that is because he has already seen this class of girl being treated this way back home. So, girl available girls in other words ok. So, that is a very you know uh, cruel kind of a social distinction that Dreza makes. Did you also notice a very faint hint of his missionary background? Yeah ok. That is the only time where this thing is uh, highlighted in the film and then at the end when there is a father confessor sent to him in the prison where he is forced to confess that he actually uh, uh, wanted uh, the pregnant girlfriend to drown and die and all that. So, you have the second instance of uh, religion on screen at that point. In the first instant he sees a little boy, he sees himself, he, sees himself, he relates to it and he just shirks, he shudders ok. That is not what he, so he in one way is a good escape from him that he managed to come away from his town and his family, okay, his total distanciation from his past. Uh, let me take to chapter 22, uh, there is a letter Roberta, signed Roberta, do you get that? This is the point where uh, he has been making advances at, uh, at uh, uh, Roberta, she has been declining this suggestion. Um, of actually uh, ha having sex with her, but now that he says that uh, it is now or never you give in or I go out of your life, so it is like a threat you have to do it otherwise you would not I would not be paying you any attention anymore. And then look what she writes to him, please Clyde do not be mad at me will you, please do not, please look at me and speak to me will not you. I am so sorry about last night, really I am terribly and I must see you tonight at the end of Elm Street at 8.30 if you can, will you? I have something to tell you, please do come and please do look at me and tell me you will even though you are angry, you won't be sorry, I love you so you know I do, your sorrowful Roberta. Now what does it tell, tell you in the naturalistic, against the naturalistic backdrop of the novel? desperation, desperation and it is not just mere love, it is also lust that exists on both sides. You come to chapter 22 when we are told that the relationship has already started, the wonder and delight of a new and more intimate form of contact, of protest gainsaid, of scruples overcome. So, all the morals, all the scruples there existed, they have been overcome now. Days when both having struggled in vain against the greater intimacy which each knew that the other was desirous of yielding to and eventually so yielding looking looked forward to be to the approaching night with an eagerness which was as a fever embodying a fear for which for with with what qualms what protests on the parts of Roberta what determination yet not without a sense of evil seduction, betrayal on the part of Clyde. So, you are already told everything ok. It was nowhere will you see the word love ok. Seduction 
and a betrayal that is already there. The moment I get a better chick, she is the first to be dropped. Okay, and that is something that is that exists in his mind from the very beginning. So, it is not like he uh, Sandra gave paid him attentions, so therefore he drops. He knows that the moment he gets any chance to go up uh, the social ladder, she is she is going to go out of the window and there is no such thing as love and that is what Dreiser tells us. <coughs>